Ladies and gentlemen, we're sorry about that uh, small technical glitch. But uh, standing before you now is uh, Mr. Ripu Bajwa, Director and General Manager, Data Protection Solutions, Dell EMC India. Before he takes over the stage, I will take this privilege to introduce him. Mr. Ripu has over 22 years of experience in the IT industry from a sales and technology perspective. With organizations today facing unprecedented data growth, Mr. Ripu and his team play a pivotal role in ensuring customers across the region modernize their data protection strategy and mitigate risk with highest levels of availability. A Dell EMC veteran for over 12 years, Mr. Ripu has led many leadership roles and is part of the country leadership team at Dell EMC. He had been a district manager for West Territory for many years, covering large enterprises in manufacturing, IT, ITES, PSU, and telecom segment. Mr. Ripu also incubated and led the service provider vertical for India region before taking charge of the DPS division since 2016. And prior to Dell EMC, Mr. Ripu, Ripu had been associated with companies like Microsoft, IBM, HCL and Tata Steel. An IIT Bombay and IIM Calcutta alumni, Mr. Ripu is passionate about CSR and is actively involved with various NGOs for a greater cause. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Ripu Bajwa as I welcome Thank him you. onto the dais. Sir, the stage is Thank yours. Thank you. Very good morning, friends. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here amongst an esteemed gathering here. Uh, wonderful sessions yesterday and today morning. Uh, it's an honor to be in front of you and take you through what we have as a content. Uh, I'd like to start with this, this particular video, of course. If we can just have some audio, it'd be good. Load women Thank size you. eight. Followed by an idea on how to make things simpler, better, or more beautiful. Approximate shape from sketches. But it's not just what it looks like. Load cross-terrain sequence. It's how it works. Which means trying. And failing. And trying again. To be a designer means not being bound by the limits of your tools, but instead, Expand box. Being inspired by them. Show me the upper. So that you can focus on what only you can do. Being creative. Being curious. and being critical. Exploring the union between function and form until suddenly you know. Optimize cushion pattern for terrain. That's it. And when you're ready to share your work, make sure everyone can see that the world is a little simpler better and more beautiful. Well, that's a short example of how uh, the theme of this entire uh, expo, which is how digital is helping human progress. This actually clip shows that it's ultimately the creativity of the human mind, which drives technology for the betterment and how the person can stretch their boundaries, go and do more. So with that short example, I like to start with how uh, we are seeing the world, we are seeing our customers, partners adopt technology, disrupt themselves. Uh, we have a competitive advantage over, over their peers and also drive human progress. The ultimate aim is to look at doing better for better experience of our customers, better experience of ourselves, and of course realizing more value out of both our technology, time, and resources. So, We'll start with this, 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 uh, this picture. I'm sure all of you can see a lot of things here. Uh, just want maybe a few seconds for you to capture a few things, and I'll, I'll go over what, what really stands out in this picture. Did you see a young man, a camera, a phone, uh, also a, 
a train, and of course a broken light. What actually was there was a modern data center. To be honest, this is an experience live because actually it talks about collecting about the person, the images, which is through the camera, to make sure that where the person is, how is the, how the weather conditions, there are sensors which are taking care of what kind of temperature is there, is there rain outside, are there, is there a need of an umbrella, for example, to stock it uh, in the store, and of course, make sure that it is just in time, and of course, it's with the right amount, number of umbrellas for the right kind of computers. Uh, so what we are seeing here is not just a person trying to see the store, it's all about the overall experience. Is he or she able to go and transact and purchase the right kind of uh, valuable item from this before boarding or off boarding? That's the experience, and that's all a data center happening, all the modern data, sir, data center which is furnishing all these details to the particular commuter at this point in time. Now, that's something very important for you to realize that in our, in our daily experiences, how things are changing, how a modern data center is really helping you to get more value. With, within Dell, we have been actually for many years looking at uh, helping customers uh, go on their entire digital transformation journey. Uh, our experience has been that these are largely four large pillars around which we have seen digital transformation uh, and, and companies looking at transformation in a big way. First, of course, is your, your primarily your digital transformation where we cover a lot of software development and how you're uh, you know, moving uh, towards agile application development, more aligned to the businesses. The next piece, which is IT transformation, which actually enables the digital transformation. That's the backbone of how you realize business value. And of course, the bedrock being security transformation and workforce transformation, because employee productivity, user experience, and of course, making sure that data which is now prevalent everywhere, it is transacting from edge to core to cloud, how is it secure all the way? So these four transformations have been the pillars around which customers have been realizing more value and going the digital way. To start with, on digital transformation, if you see, we all are aware of more number of sensors in our lives. We are, we are seeing data being collected from almost any particular device. Smart devices are coming in. All the collection of data is happening, and all the new applications are pumping in more and more data. Uh, there was an IDC estimate which actually talked about 44 zettabytes of data by 2020. And that figure might be increasing even more. All the data which is coming into the data centers need to be analyzed. And all insights need to be given back to businesses as, as outcome-based decisions. We need to look at how we can look at these data, the insights, and bring it back into the application with actionable insight. This whole circle is very important. As organizations, if we are developing applications faster, analyzing them, putting them back into those actionable insights, the circle needs to complete faster. As organizations try to complete and move faster on this development cycle, they are much ahead of the others. We have seen many examples in the morning. Yes, we've seen very relevant examples of, of uh, automated car not being the disruptor, but it is actually taking only the driver's piece away. But really speaking, our lives are getting increasingly, increasingly automated. We are looking at data coming and living through new, new data capital, which is, which is the live stock for every organization that needs to be protected. All the assets, which is, which is more critical than the systems on which they are running on. The data is more critical than what, what they are running on and where and who's the ultimate custody of uh, this data. I am using this data to transact. I'm sharing it with partners. I'm sharing it with, uh, with regulators. I'm sharing it with uh, multiple entities. And are they taking the exact care of the way I need to? Are they following my guidelines? Maybe not. So security is a very important aspect as we see data becoming more and more prevalent in whatever we are doing. Given the fact that we have actually transformed one of the largest, very relevant uh, systems here. I'm sure all of you use this site, which is IRCTC. It's powered by a tool from Dell Technologies, which actually helps in this continuous development and continuous deployment, which really is all about taking data making sure the mining happens, making sure it is being deployed, and it's real time. And this is all happening using a very, very innovative technology platform as a service, which we have deployed 
within our own system. Now, if we really talk about digital transformation, what is the critical bedrock here? IT. IT is enabling everything. In fact, IT is the real business today. Today, most of our organizations, be it legacy, be it healthcare, be it uh, banks, government, all of us are seeing that the, the total this ecosystem is running around what you're collecting, how you're connecting the dots, and then how you're realizing value back to your users. This particular cycle, if we are able to actually capitalize faster, and as Ben said in the morning, we should stop doing what we are doing and start thinking, is it relevant? If it's relevant, we can actually look at what processes, what people are behind it, and redeploy them and make it more and more efficient. If we start doing that in a daily basis, what we are doing is we are following the cycle. We are collecting the information, we are connecting the dots, we are trying to make it more relevant to our business, and then the cycle has to continuously evolve. Because every, every few months, every few uh, decade, uh, one year, you see a, a, a new competitor in your own industry. So it is very important that you do the change and you be the disruptor to your business rather than getting disrupted. Now, you might ask me, for doing IT transformation, who's going to give me the extra budgets? Now, the budgets are all there. You are having a lot of applications. These are running OPEX costs. You are having people behind them. You're having processes. That's your running CAPEX also. Now, look at ways in which you can automate, modernize that, automate and transform all these assets. And the, one of our key studies is that more and more you actually sweat the asset and redeploy the resources the way people have done it, you have seen massive savings. One of the studies actually says that 81% of the organizations need to transform to be relevant to their own customers, which means that close to 19% of the people are in, the, in that maturity curve and 81% are not, which is a staggering figure because we think that we are really a, have adopted IT transformation, but really speaking, there is so much more to be done. We can get more out of what we have deployed. We can get much, much more out of what is running today as well in our data centers. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. This chart really talks about how we did a study. And when we did uh, what is the current state of IT transformation that you are in, and what is your future state, that means where you want to be, actually it is not the technology assets which have got massive savings. If you really see, savings are close to 10% to 15% range. And that's the cost of amortization of uh, hardware costs that you see in a data center. The more important are the elements around uh, people and processes. You're actually automating, you're redefining the processes when you're doing application development. You're actually gaining more over there, which really brings down to the fact that if you really have a very top-driven, executive sponsorship-driven uh, a business transformation guideline, the results are much more because you are really taking new processes. You are actually talking about redeployment of people into the right areas rather than sweating the assets, keeping the lights on, running the IT data center, and not running it at, as a silo. You have to make IT more relevant and closer to the business needs. And that way you start to get more out of this, the savings. So the real savings happen from the current OPEX itself. You are having your IT running costs, and you are also having people and process costs. That is a major saving for you. How do we do this? We actually take a cohesive uh, approach. We talk about applications. We talk about the operating model, which is a technical piece, where it is lying, the on-prem, the off-prem, and of course, how you're developing the products, how it is being more relevant to the businesses. If this has to be together. If you do one in silo, you will not get the maximum results. So when you talk about IT transformation, you have to talk about all new applications, supporting with the cloud native as well as the legacy so that both your current business runs as well as you're more ready for the, for the new businesses that is going to be more aligned towards new application, new faster rollouts, and then make sure that all this is running smoothly. When I say that, it has to be driven top down, make sure that all the business outcomes that your business are really looking for are being met, which is typically how you're monetizing the data. Data is your is your new oil. You have to look at how I can get much, much more business outcomes based on the data that I've collected. All companies, be it telcos, be it financial industries, be it healthcare today, they're struggling when it comes to, have you got enough insights from what you have? When we go and ask hospitals, for example, the major challenge is there, the doctors 
And the administrative staff says they really don't know so much about the information. All the information is there, but they really do not have assets to collect and make this more relevant for the people and the patient's health. Now, that's a big area of opportunity in healthcare industry. Uh, if you look at financial industry, so much more, with so much of cyber crime coming in, threats like million hits per day, we, we are in a world where almost every transaction that we are doing is open to anyone. And how do you secure yourself? There has to be ways and means of saying that, okay, no matter what, even if I'm under, under attack, how do I recover my information? Do I have the assets to recover that information and not pay the ransom and be declared that I've been under attack and lose probably more than what exactly was the cost of the asset. You may lose more in terms of brand, reputation, et cetera, and even your customers. So that's the kind of impact of security that now plays. So in the particular industry that you play in, you have to really know what is the value of the data. Where is it going? Who is really taking charge? Are you having those SLAs with the person you're dealing with with respect to the data? And therefore, what I want to really emphasize is when we do an IT transformation study, we really, we really take four key, key questions, if you can say, to map out the, the current health of the organization. What is the business impact? What is the technical? What is the operational and the financial readiness that you have for IT transformation? We really ask these questions and map you onto a particular score sheet, which really tells you your current state. And believe me, not many organizations are in that high state of maturity when it comes to realizing business value or realizing the most out of your IT assets. And we define also a particular a future state, which is where you want to be. And typically, this is high end of maturity when it comes to IT transformation. And when we plot this on a particular chart, we find that most of the organizations are below the score of four, which means they are still not yet fully transformed or they don't have the business, technical, financial, and operational needs defined. And therefore, between modernization and automation, there is a big, big play of unrealized opportunity. This is what we call it, you make it real. You have assets, you have applications, you have developing new stuff, but there is so much that you can still gain from your current deployments. That's called unlocking the value of your assets. That's unrealized opportunity which we can help you realize. And before we really go there, what we have seen is most organizations who have traversed this journey from four to seven to eight, they have really been more competitive when it comes to running on-prem, off-prem. They've saved more money when running on-prem because now these technologies give you control and choice, which typically a public cloud provider will not be able to guarantee you that, though of course there are multi-cloud providers today who say you can have a hybrid model, but ultimately your data is your data. So if you can get all the benefits of a public or a hybrid cloud on-prem, that's a big plus. This is what this unrealized opportunity gives you. You get the best of both worlds. Typically, we have seen that they are much faster and ahead of their competitors when it comes to deploying new applications. They are, they are 10x faster. And of course, they are likely to hit their targets two times more, which means they are growing faster. They are growing ahead of their competitors. This is how we have seen some of the, some of the banks, some of the largest players who have adopted uh, IT transformation, and on the high end of the curve, they're really able to differentiate using IT transformation. And that's a big plus. Giving you a quick example of how to accelerate this. You, you have realized that, yes, you have to sweat the assets. Now, how do you really go about this journey? Now, if you really ask me, there is a particular design. This is uh, a grid that we have mapped between legacy, uh, virtual, and of course, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or container as a service that you can call it. How are you? seeing your data center applications being mapped onto that. If you see the current state of affairs, legacy apps, they are more driven from the SLA approach. You have to look at what in an IS and a PaaS world that looks like. That will be more driven on services. That will be more driven on your accesses and the APIs that you define. More real-time change, more adaptability, more, custom, more need to be more agile. So that is what this, this need becomes. When it comes to automation, that this is typically a change process driven. We have seen large organizations sometimes struggle because the change request itself takes time. Now, how do you really move fast? We, sh we heard about an example, how uh, Ben was talking about how the, how the Taliban was different than most of the American organizations. That was agility. That's, that's how they adopted. It's not that they were small, but it's that they decided. Now, large organizations can also decide to be very, very agile. 
We are one example of that. We decide very fast. We move very fast because our customers want us to move that way. We have organizations which are web tech companies, the largest of the public. Public cloud providers are using lots of infrastructure from us. We have to be in tune with their needs. So really speaking, it's all about how really fine-tuned. You may be at a very large organization, you may be a, a small player, but the need is how to really adapt fast. And this is where automation really can give you that extra push. But before that, if you really see the other components of your data center itself, which is compute, storage, and how you're protecting, you may be having tape libraries keeping your data. Have you ever seen how long it takes to recover your data from a tape library? Plus, you may not even be sure that you get your data back. How are you going to answer the regulators? How are you going to meet the compliances which are coming in from all ends? It requires you to look at modern data protection. It requires you to look at a modern data center architecture. But of course, can you rip and replace whatever you have? You cannot. You have to look at a path of transition, which means I get to sweat my assets, I unlock more value out of that, I adopt new routes to market, I take the new technology along with me. And that's what our mission is. As we see, today's data centers, 30% legacy, 60% virtual, which is 90% on the left-hand side. But going forward, which is tomorrow's data centers, be less than 30% legacy and virtual. It'll be 70% IIS and PaaS. How are you migrating towards that? How are you looking at your, your choice of partners? Are they giving you those technologies which will be running in this side, on the right-hand side? Because that's going to devise your IT transformation pace. And then, of course, your overall journey towards being completely digital transformed. How do we play here? We play in terms of all the quadrants. Legacy and virtual has been our, our domain, but what we are really seeing is a massive shift towards the right-hand side, which is IS, PaaS, and that's where a lot of our, our group companies, which is within Dell Technologies, we are focusing to help our partners and customers realize more value. I'll shift to the third, more important piece, which is workforce transformation. Now, most of you will realize uh, today we are working are our employees really satisfied? What is, what is the key reason of churn? We have the best employees leaving. How do we really retain them? We actually did a survey and we found out close to 13% of the reason was actually to do with the kind of devices you're giving them, the kind of handsets, the kind of collaborative tools, the kind of, uh, the, the kind of uh, you know, you, you set up a meeting, the, the work from home culture, for example, itself, and how, as an organization, you are moving in terms of arming them with the right technologies. And of course, post-95, 1995, you'll see a new, a new Generation Z of, uh, of people. It's not millennials, it's gen Generation Z who will be coming. And they have a total different mindset. They are talking about software development right from, right from the day one. So you've got to be giving them those kind of devices and, and arming them with those kind of uh, collaborative tools so that they don't leave you. And analysis shows that what are the largest wasters of time is being the kind of device, the software glitches that, that a person experiences. That is the reason of churn. So if you really, really go and do a, a complete study of your own organization, and you'll see that I can do a lot of more steps in terms of transforming the workforce experience. And believe me, people and productivity and, of course, your business is related. So you've got to look at workforce transformation very, very closely. What we are doing here is we are, we are actually looking at it both inside out and outside in approach. As a, as a first example, as you saw, it, it was all about how we are helping the person look at a virtual reality and an augmented reality to get an immersive experience. The person really was interested in more about giving the better, the better experience to the person who was jogging because that is how you're really stretching the boundaries. And this is all possible if you have the right tools and technology to arm you with. This really becomes a differentiator. This can be a big way to attract talent as well. And this is what we are actually propagating to many companies. How are you looking at workforce? What are tools and technologies? Are you really making it secure? One of the greatest threats today is endpoints. So if you just arm them with best technology but don't apprise them of whatever possible pitfalls, or you could probably lose the data uh, uh, you know, innocently trying to have a conversation, those, those are very important areas. So our approach is look at devices, make them fully secure, be, be able to monitor it, 
be able to give the guarantee that yes, it is complying to the business, business ethics and the governance that you have laid out. That is very important. So this is the entire workforce transformation framework that we follow. And believe me, it's not about just connecting your device from wherever you want. It's all about making sure that the data is moving and you're also encrypting it, making sure it is available and people are not misusing it. That's very critical. Finally, if you see from a security transformation, now this is an area where I think maximum spend is happening. All the CIOs today are concerned about security. One of the key areas where we have really seen customers come back and tell us uh, there is a need for us to look at more unified approach between the risk teams and the security and the IT security teams as such. The IT security teams and the risk management teams should be having a common goal. There should be a more unified approach because till the time they know what is the business risk that they are trying to address, the IT security team may not be bringing the right tools and the framework. So unified approach is, is a first. And of course, being adaptable. Today's world is all about learning, the feedback cycle. You heard about examples around feedback. How organizations differentiate based on feedback that they've been getting. The Nigeria example was amazing. I mean, that's an eye-opener. Today, most of the SOCs which are running, it's all about being proactive, but largely reactive. They know they have been attacked. They know what is the learning. They know, OK, we have to go, go back and recover from, the, from this point, from the last incident. In fact, we have technologies which really are proving to the, us that every day we have to be catching up to the hackers. So let's live in a real world. Security is about, about data, about our business. We cannot be compromised. Because if we are in the news for the wrong reasons, all the effort that we have done over the years will not count. And therefore, when we look at trust, it's no longer thinking that you are all knowledgeable. You should look at experts who can come and audit you and give you advice. And there are security experts, because no matter what you do, you won't have enough people who will be knowing a lot about security. You need to depend upon a community of people who, whom you can trust maybe in the similar industry, or you can look at security experts who can come and run this as a service and tell you before you are having a, a, a God forbid, a particular attack or you lose your particular information. So trust and bringing the expert advisory service is extremely important. And finally, building a resilient infrastructure. Word resilience here is very important because it should be able to look at what is happening. It is, should be able to look at your security posture, make suitable amendments, and take all the right necessary steps, be it in the IT side or even the business risk definition itself. How much risk can you afford? You should know. What is the potential impact of this data, suppose landing with somebody else? How much value will I lose? Can you quantify that? Now, that is called being alert and how much awareness you have built. And we have tools for governance which actually say, OK, all this data which I have in my organization, they are all interrelated, potential impact of one data what is the other applications which will get impacted, and doing a complete risk analysis, which is called business impact analysis. This data really is helpful for you because now you know what's your security posture. And then you can build the right technologies, right tools to actually go ahead and protect yourself. One of the key things that we have been doing very, very closely, uh, working together in the entire ecosystem of our partners, we have been looking data protection as a, as a primary first so that you are free to go and innovate. When I talk about innovation for human progress, you cannot really innovate if there's a fear behind you that somebody is going to take my data away. That's going to be overbearing on you. So we have to free the developers. We have to free the application developers that whatever you're doing is secure. And that is the bedrock on which our data protection framework works. Be it virtual world, be it uh, legacy apps, be it multi-cloud, uh, looking at cybersecurity threats, we have technologies which really make sure that you as, a, as an organization are free to go and develop. We are taking care of all this. This is our job. We make sure not the data center, but even your devices. We make sure even the way you are experiencing the cloud, which means what data goes in cloud, how it is moving between cloud, that is also in your visibility and control. Those technologies are available today for you to really go in and cache. Go and use the hybrid cloud if you want to. Come back if you want to you can actually be completely immune to any cyber threat because you know you can recover from a safe area, which is a vault area, and which is air-gapped. And this is one technology which banks are using today. No matter what happens to the data center, no matter whoever comes in, even if the system is down, they know there's a gold copy from where they can recover. So they don't have to go and say that they are at a loss. 
And somebody who's hacked it also, even if the data is encrypted, they can't do much about it. So they have put all those technologies so that they are safe. And that's called you know, making sure you're, you're, you're protected from, for all kind of applications, wherever they are residing, any SLAs, and any target device. So that's a unique proposition which we are offering. And also I would like to say that this is a must, because today you cannot just say that I'm protected on one particular piece, but I'm exposed on the other. A hacker will not let you off, because he will actually come from the, from the place where you're not aware of. You heard about the example of how a, that was a good sales tip which I got, in fact, from, about the example of Nigeria, that you know you really put a mistake, you call a mis you know, you put out a scam mail which has a mistake, because it catches the person who's most vulnerable. And this is all security about only the vulnerable piece. Well, I'm right out of time, but final slide, I just want to end here that what, is, what are we helping? We are helping in all four transformations. We talked about digital, talked about IT in depth, security, and workforce. All these four transformations need to be taken together. Whenever we are looking at digital transformation and looking at unlocking more value for human progress, our progress, you cannot just do one. Each of them are interrelated. So taking all four together is the way to go. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll take, to take any questions. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Bajwa. Thank you. May I request you to kindly remain on stage for just a couple of more minutes. And I request Ms. Shirley Biswas, Vice President, Audience Development and Sales, ABP Private Limited, to kindly come forward and present a memento. So may I request you to kindly come to the middle of the stage? Please put your hands together for... Mr. Bajwa, thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Thank you.